Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video here, I'm going to be showing you all something on the Xbox 360, and I will say right off the bat, this is exclusive for RGH systems. This is not going to be for JTAG systems, because what I'm explaining won't be possible on a JTAG system, and this is not going to be for bad update-enabled systems. This is only for RGH systems. Specifically, this is going to be for Corona 4 gigabyte motherboards. This is going to be showing you all how you can disable that 4 gigabyte internal memory. And it might sound a little bit like a downgrade, but let me explain what's going on here. Now, friend of the channel here and fellow YouTuber Modsville USA has actually done about a 45 minute video talking about this with a system that he worked on, essentially with 4 gigabyte Corona motherboards using a eMMC as opposed to a standard NAND. And while this does work fine for many systems out there, unfortunately, there are more and more of these e MMC modules dying, specifically on the Corona 4 gigabyte edition. So he's showing it right here. This right here is a 4 gigabyte unit, even though it shows as 3 gigabytes. But one of the telltale signs is if you try to format it and it tries to format, you can see there's no change. There's still that there, and you might run into other issues. And that is a telltale sign. Here we go just like that error, it's a telltale sign that your 4 gigabyte NAND storage on the system or eMMC is in the process of dying and it's probably not going to last all too much. Now this is a complete guide showing at a hardware level how you can go in, remove the 4 gigabyte eMMC, install a 16 megabyte NAND in there, and then get your system back up and running and get it to a more reliable point. However, his video is more for a repair and my video here is going to be more for some preventative maintenance because if you have one of these problematic systems, something that could help you out uh, definitely in the long run by either, you know, prolonging this or even being able to avoid it in some way is to actually just disable this here. Yes, you'll still be able to use your system, but if we go in and we disable this module here from being able to save to it, we're able to prevent some extra write cycles on there and therefore we're able to kind of save the life of it or at least even prolong the life of it here. It's one of those features where for a little bit of a trade-off, you're getting some nice free insurance. Now, if you'd like to verify this yourself, you could open up something such as Dash Launch, which I'm going to do right here. And if you open this up, you need to look at the board option in the bottom right. And if it shows Corona, this is a video that you could cover. If you have a Trinity system with an internal four gigabyte memory unit on there, you don't need to worry about this any other motherboard, it does not matter. This video is only going to be for Corona motherboards, specifically the ones with that four gigabyte module. If you wanna check that as well, we can go ahead and bring up the guide. Let's go ahead and go to the settings and system settings, exit out of here, and you'll be able to see that I do have one on here. If I go over to storage, for example, it should show up. I just have my hard drive, but also a memory unit right here. If I hit Y on device options, you can see, yep, it's at about 3.1 gigabytes. And I know that is because this is a four gigabyte eMMC unit. However, one thing to keep in mind here is that once we perform this, it is reversible, but the idea is we're going to have it operate like a 16 megabyte NAND, meaning that we won't be able to save anything to this unless we revert it. So I would encourage you all to go in and back up any files who care about about if there's any files on this memory unit. So for example, if I go in here, I do have a XEX menu, for example. I pretty much set it up like a complete standalone system. And we can even go into Aurora because I have some extra files there. In order to check this within Aurora, you can press the back button, you can go to the file manager, and you should find the onboard MU, which is another sign that you have one of these here. If you go to onboard MU, you can go in here and you'll be able to see any of the files, folders, applications, and such that you might have. So if there's anything that you care about, you are going to want to go in, copy it out to a USB drive, even transfer it to your computer using FTP if there's any files that you care about. Since I don't care about any of the files on this here, I don't mind disabling this. So with that being said, let's go ahead and work on getting that set up here. We're going to need a USB drive and a computer on hand because I'm going to have you download and transfer a few things. We will need to make a NAND modification for this, so one of the first things we're going to need here is going to be JRunner with extras. I'm going to have the releases page linked down below in the description, but you can just download the latest JRunner with extras zip file and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Now to dump and reflash our NAND, we can use something such as Simple360 NAND Flasher. Again, go ahead, save this somewhere you can easily find it. And finally, if you need some sort of a 
extraction software, especially for a 7-zip file, you can use, well, 7-zip. You can download this, install it, and it should be easy enough to use. It's free, open source, and it works pretty well. Now, the first thing we're going to need here is Simple 316 and Flasher. When these are both downloaded, you can right-click this and extract it right here using 7-zip. It should give you a Simple 316 NAND Flasher folder in which you can right-click, copy this out. Now, plug in a USB drive. Make sure it has been set up to the FAT32 file system and it is compatible on your Xbox 360. But once it's been formatted properly, we can go in here, go to the root, right-click, and paste. And once that's been copied over, we can exit back out here, right-click, eject our drive, and take it over to the system. Over at your system, plug in your USB drive and wait for it to propagate here. Now once it shows up, we can tap the back button within Aurora, File Manager, we're going to go to the USB 0, Simple 360 NAND Flasher, find the default executable, and tap A to launch it. And once it launches, this is another verification right here. If you check this out, it shows it detected a MMC NAND, and it's showing that it is a MMC for a Corona V2, which is a 4 gigabyte module. That means that, again, this system works on here. I'm stressing it yet again. This is only for the 4 gigabyte Corona motherboards. If you have a standard Corona motherboard, if you have a Trendy, if you have anything else, you do not need to follow this at all. This is only for those 4 gigabyte motherboards, but once that's all set up, we can tap the X button and wait for this to dump out. And here we go, once it's been dumped, we can just press any button to exit as it says, and it should bring us back to the custom dashboard here. Let's wait a few moments. There we go. Alright, so now once that's been dumped, we can go ahead, unplug our USB drive, and we're going to need this over at the computer, so go back over to the computer. Over at the PC, go into your USB drive, go into Simple 360 NAND Flasher, and you should find your flashdump.bin as well as a CPU key.txt. You're also going to find a log file there, which we don't necessarily need, but these two are going to be the important ones, CPU key and flashdump. I definitely recommend making a backup of this here so you can create a new folder and you can call it something such as Corona 4GB backup, something like that, and we're going to transfer both of those over. Now we're going to need to work with JRunner with extras, so you can right click this and use something such as 7-zip to extract it into its own folder. Once you have JRunner with extras extracted, you can open it up and find the JRunner executable and double click it to launch. Once this pops up, if you haven't used it before, it's pretty simple, but do keep in mind it is also powerful enough that it could brick your system. I'll give a warning for that in a little bit here, but you can click on load source, navigate over to wherever your flash dump is saved, and it should bring up your CPU key in there if you have your CPU key.txt in the same directory. Otherwise, if it doesn't load up, go ahead, open it up, punch the CPU key in here, and click reload if you need to. Now, there's going to be a change we need to make here. Once this is all loaded up, we can click on Patches under XE Build, and the option we're going to be looking for is No Int MU. This stands for No Internal Memory Unit. What this is going to do is disable that internal memory unit. Now, keep in mind here, if in the future you ever want to revert this and you want to use that storage for whatever reason, you can always take your flashdump.bin and you can reflash it to the system, or if you're going to resort to creating a new NAND, you can load up a fresh one in here, uncheck no int mu, and then create one. But that's getting a little ahead of ourselves here. We're going to want to make sure that one is checked. The second thing here will be that when you build your NAND, you have to build it specifically for your system. And what I mean by that is I know that my system here for sure is a RGH3 system because I modded it myself. I had it noted down. If you had yours modified by someone else, you need to figure out, you need to know what exact mod you have. So for example, if it's a RGH 1.2, if it's a RGH 2 system, if it's a SRGH, and figure out what options you're going to need for that. I stress that here because if you do not build this accordingly, mine is RGH3, but if you do not know or if you don't have RGH3, do not blindly check this box here. Because if you do not put in these settings here correctly, you will brick your system. I have to put in this warning because not only I'm making a video about hopefully saving a system, but when I do make videos that deal with NAND manipulation here, it seems like people ignore this part and they brick their systems here. So keep that in mind. Just because these are my settings does not mean they are going to be your same settings. So do keep that in mind. Again, big warning right there. If you don't punch this in properly, I know for mine, for example, I need Glitch 2 and RGH3, but if you don't punch this in properly, you will brick your system. You'll have to open up the system, solder in a hardware flasher, and manually reflash your old NAND. That's about it. Now, once this has all been selected with the proper settings and patches, we can click on Create XE Build. Give it a few moments here, 
and once it does it all, that's about it. So we can now close out of JRunner because we are done. Now go back into your JRunner with extras folder. You should see a folder with a serial number for your console. Go ahead and navigate into that. And inside of here, you're going to want to grab your UPD flash.bin file. Go ahead, right click, copy this out, go back to your USB drive, go to simple 360 NAND flasher, and right click and paste it within simple 360 NAND flasher. We also don't need the flash dump.bin here, so we can go ahead and delete that since we've already backed it up but that's about all you need to do. As long as you are ready to flash the system, and keep in mind it is a risky procedure here, but if you do it right, it should hopefully work. You can exit out of here, right click, eject your USB drive, take it back over to the system. Back over at the console, plug in your USB drive, make sure it is showing up. Now from here, we can either press the back button or the guide button. If I do the guide button, you can go to file browser, go to your USB drive, Simple 360 NAND flasher and launch the default executable. Now you can see here, it's going to look a little bit different and it will give you options if you want to flash your NAND, if you want to safe flash your NAND, or if you want to dump your NAND. Of course, we are going to want to flash the NAND and we've already dumped it so we don't need to do a safe flash. But what you can do here is tap the A button and this here is the final warning I'm going to give. Again, if you have built your NAND improperly, you will brick your system. Your NAND must be set up specific to your console settings. And if you have not done that, your system will brick. So do keep that in mind. Now with that final warning out of the way, go ahead, press the start button if you want to continue on. And just like this here, it's going to, as you can see, read image to memory, write image to flash, and it just takes a few seconds here. It's actually a lot faster than expected, but that's cool. And here we go, we are done. So once it's done flashing, it is going to reboot. Just leave your controller alone, let the system reboot, and let's see what happens. Oh, and for what it's worth, once your system ends up rebooting, as you can see right here, I can confirm it was correct. Once it reboots, you can also unplug your USB drive. Now, once you come back to Aurora, there's a few ways we can check this out. First of all, if you're looking at this screen, your system is up and running and working, so congratulations, you have modified and flashed this successfully. Now what we can do is press the back button, go to file manager, and if you no longer see an onboard MU, then congratulations, that means you've done that correctly on here. Alternatively, if you want to see it within the stock system itself, you can go to guide, system, system settings, or I guess settings and system settings, and within here, go to your storage, and as long as you do not see that internal device showing up, then that means that this again has been applied correctly. So congratulations, did you end up removing a feature? Yes. But did you also do something that can protect your system and keep it running longer? Also yes. Either way, that is about it for this video here. If you have a Corona 4 gigabyte model, hopefully your system is booting up properly again. You no longer have that, which you wouldn't think downgrading would be an upgrade, but in this case it is here for this type of hardware. But either way, again, that's about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.